there was a crack over there, which the uh, contractor said he covered up like five times. And basically when he was leaving announced that it was impossible to fix. Tonight when I was sanding the area down, I could see that there was something going on. Maybe it was a crack, maybe it wasn't, I don't know, it was a shadow. So maybe it was just a void. Either way, um, can't just leave it. So I've tried to, I sanded it as far down as I could. I gooped it up, threw a piece of tape on it, and I've done one coat of cover. I'll have to sand this down. Obviously that's pretty awful. Um, and then, so I did this with a six inch knife and I'll come back and do it again with a, uh, well, I've got a 12 and I've got a 14 or 16. I don't know. Well, I, one of the ones that I had is, has gone missing. So anyway, I'll, I'll blend it much, much further out and hopefully that will more or less disappear. I was able, well, this didn't require a whole lot of sanding because he didn't put a whole lot of mud on it. So that was easy. That required a bit more sanding. So that's been done as well. And I think it's ready for primer. Um, I don't know, maybe I should be going further out with these. Yeah, maybe I better watch another couple of YouTube videos because in the, the bathroom, um, I went much further out. I don't actually remember why, but I know I did. Anyway, again, because I'm not able to prime tonight, that was, uh, I could do a little bit more cleanup on the, the smoke alarms, all of which were previously missed. Um, so they had at most one coat of whatever put on. So there's one. And then I tried cleaning up a corner here that was not so great. Um, they chose to go with uh, corner trowels, which I didn't go with in the bathroom. It was made, um, I won't say clear, but the, this Vancouver carpenter, the fellow that I have learned something from, he basically says, he doesn't use them because they make it very difficult to get a good result and you can't get the the best possible result because the shape of the trowel simply doesn't allow it. So I, the room that I did, I did with very sharp inside corners. So I look at these and, and, and they're kind of not, well, they're not as good as I did. And I don't know, there's a lot of, the tape is showing in a lot of places. So I, I don't know if that's, acceptable or if I have to cover that up um, and a bit more touch-ups inside the closet there were some screws showing um, I guess that's pretty much it I think yeah the primer will cover these up they're not out far enough to be a bother um, <clears throat> But I'll have to come back with a, a screwdriver currently buried under crap to fix that one because that's clearly going to show through uh, whatever I put on top of it. So that needs to, to get sunk. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, I thought I would be able to prime tonight in that other room, but that was not the case. So sometime soon. One uh, thing that has um, become clear is I got these, uh, bulbs. They're the, the, I don't know what they're called. The Thomas Edison. Oh, actually they're hidden here. The Thomas Edison style. So they look like the old tiny, um, light bulbs. They're, they're kind of nifty, I guess. I like them, but as soon as I plugged them in, I was aware of how, really how not bright they are. Kind of dreary. Um, but once you start painting the walls white, uh, it gets a lot brighter in here. So the experience of this room I'm having right now is that it is in fact quite bright. So it's, uh, A, it's gonna be fun to see what the rest of the upstairs looks like once I get the priming done. But I'm also um, curious, borderline terrified of how bright it's gonna be on the first floor where I have a ton of really bright LED lights. Especially in that kitchen. That kitchen's gonna be a nightmare. But I'll just throw on a, a dimmer switch in the kitchen, I guess, and that problem is solved. 
Anyway, enough talking. See you later.